I assume that if you bought this tent, you're uh, a little smarter than me and haven't made these mistakes. But I figured for the people who may not have bought this tent yet and not figured it out, uh, I'd make this video to let you know what I did wrong, how I knew it was wrong, and what I do now to fix it or get around it. Before we begin though, I think I must both brag and humble myself when it comes to this tent. See, I purchased this uh, on drop in 2020 because uh, I was one of the first to get on the Durston train. I uh, am really proud of that. I'm one of the OGs on the Durston tent purchases, which is kind of a, a nice thing for me. I like that. Now, the thing I have to humble myself about is that I never used it for the first two years I had it. I bought this beautiful tent and I never used it. I spent most of my trips in hammocks and if not, I was uh, sharing a tent with someone else. So I never brought mine uh, and I never really properly learned how to pitch it until last year. I took a few trips uh, that were longer and that I couldn't take my hammock on and I needed to learn how to pitch it. and. I did it really poorly, <laughs> so uh, hopefully you can learn from those things and not make those mistakes for yourself. When I first received this tent, it came with these little teeny tiny lines on the four corners that you stake out to tension the base of the tent. And the first thing I did was I replaced them with these long lines because I thought there's no way that that little line is the right thing. There's got to be a mistake in production or something. but. It wasn't, and I want to show you why. So imagine this. Here's the ground, right? And here's the Durston tent pitched on the ground, and here is the height of the base of the tent. This line here is really important. This is what causes the tension on that line. Now, as soon as I take that line and I adjust it and I pull that out farther, all of a sudden I've changed the tension on the tent and the tent wants to do this. And that's what's gonna create those long bows and angles in your pitch. And that's not how the tent's designed to be used. You want a nice straight line to the ground. So this line here, the length of it is actually designed to keep the tent square with variations in the depth of the ground around the tent with bumps and valleys on the on the ground so don't go extending these lines too far that you will change the geometry of the tent the first times i pitched this one of the biggest mistakes i made was not making sure that the base was square and that the the tensioners at the base were pulling out at the correct angle what you want them to be doing is you want them to be pulling out at the equal angle so that tension is the same on both sides and I had a real hard time grasping how to do that because you don't have all of them in at the right place at the right time when you're first setting it up so the system i came up with really comes down to three steps the first one is to peg your first stake in not all the way because you're going to adjust it after the second thing is to have the tension on each of these lines about halfway so that you can play with it once you've got them all pegged in the third one is to make sure that when you're tensioning these you pull them out by the corner of the tent and set the peg at the angle that you think you want to have the reason for that is so that you can get that equal angle on all four corners of the tent. Because if you don't, you end up in a situation like I did the first time I pitched this thing, it's arts and crafts time, where you peg the first one in and you pull this taut to peg the second one in. All of a sudden, the tent ends here and here, and as soon as you peg that third one in, you're creating the wrong tension across both of those locations. So if you want this tent to be square and 90 degrees on every corner, the angle to be correct on each one of these, it's really important that you have the ability to tension this and that you have the ability to move these stakes. And this first one is gonna get moved no matter what because of this reason here. The other thing, and I didn't mention this already, is that when you set this up, you want to make sure that your doors where the zipper is is closed all the way because the tension on the base of the tent 
and those four lines that we talked about is really important. And if that's not closed, you're not gonna have the correct amount of tension on each one of those. The other thing that I really like to do is when I put these poles in, is I don't like to put them up all the way and create the, the real high part of that tent. I prefer to leave a little bit of space so that when I adjust the tent and when I adjust the corners after I see my pitch, I can see what needs to be changed, if anything needs to be changed at all. Once I've got all my pegs in and I've got my poles up and I've got them tensioned to the what I think is the right height, I'll go around and I'll check the tension of all the lines. And I can see this top one's droopy. I can see this side one's droopy. But this one, these ones seem to be fairly taut. What that's gonna do is it's gonna give me an idea of where my tent is out of square. So there's a few ways that this happens. The first one is that first peg. So if I've got a tent and all my pegs are the right angle except for one it's going to cause too much tension on this side and not enough tension on this side so this corner will be loose and this one will be too tight so what i want to do is i want to adjust the angle of that to make that first stake be the correct angle and create the correct tension now you can see that i haven't actually corrected the full pitch because i've run into what i've called the droopy droopy tent and that's specifically caused by one problem. And this line here is what pays the price. So that happens because instead of the tent being square and having equal pressure on that ridge line where the poles are, what's happened is that line is too close together. So it's created more of a shape like this, where this line is no longer as far apart as it needs to be to create the tension on that, which causes that droop in the ridge line. So in order to correct that, I'm gonna to need to drop my poles so that that ridge line droop can be corrected, and I'm going to have to re-square my corners. I highly recommend that anytime you make a change to the base, you lower the height of the poles. Not all the way that you have to take it down, but at least enough that you're gonna be measuring the tension of the bottom without in the tension of the pole impacting your visibility of it. Now to square up with all the doors closed. That looks better, let's raise the poles and see what we get. Now, already we have tension up here that we didn't have before. So it's more about... Uh, the joy of the trekking pole tent. That was my fault. This is one thing I've learned about trekking pole tents is when you're staking them out, you want the cordage to be at the base of the stake. So that when it pulls it's not pulling at the top it's pulling where it's anchored otherwise your tent will fall down <laughs> like mine did all right let's put our poles back up i've heard people actually talk about how complicated it is to find the inside corners when you're pitching the x mid but the simple rule is this short line will go onto one of the corners that does not have a door pole. So it's quick and easy. You don't even have to really think about it. The long line will go around the pole and connect to that corner there. And you can clip the two top pieces in and have the ridge line up.
Now, when I'm looking at the inside of the tent, there's a few things I'm looking for. The first one is the distance of the mesh from the fly. Because I want that to be as far as it can be all the way across. And it looks like I've done pretty good. If your tent is square, it will be nice. If your tent's not square, one side of these panels is going to come in and lean on your mesh. Now I'm going to go mess this pitch up the other way. Because we had it so that the ridge line was too close to the middle. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pitch this so that that ridge line is pulled too far apart and our, our askewness looks more like this so that this is too much distance for that ridge line instead of too little and it'll be the opposite of droopy. In order to accomplish this, I don't need to do more than move two stakes. I'm going to drop my poles down and move that stake over and that stake over so that we get that same skew. All right, stake number one, I'm going to move, I don't know, about eight inches. Stake number two, I'm going to do the same thing, about eight inches over. Increase the tension on the poles again. Zip up those doors. And now we get, instead of the droop in the middle, we get what I like to call the shark fin. And what that does to the tent is it creates these saggy sides on all four sides, except for that ridge line, which is super tight. So you see, I've got lots of sag and play in all of the broad sides of this tent that I've created that don't need to be there. The other thing it does is inside. You also see that now I can't zip these up with one hand because there's not tension on the base of this anymore. On the inside of the tent, that space and that distance that we talked about having between the fly and the, the mesh no longer exists. It's almost right pushed up against it because those sides are so droopy. So any breeze that comes along is just gonna push that right up against the tent. As someone who struggles with condensation, I don't like that. This is why I have a double wall tent. Yeah, so keep your, your tent square and avoid the shark fin. Now that we've talked about most of the ways that I've messed up the X-Mid and pitching the X-Mid, I kind of wanted to hear from you on what you've done, what you've changed, and how you've adjusted your style and your approach to pitching this tent. I mean, it's a fantastic tent. And the only thing I regret about this tent is not using it more that's not true. That's a lie. I really prefer to sleep in my hammock. Even though I have this beautiful tent, and even though now I understand how to use it, my preference is still to sleep in a hammock. If you want to learn how to sleep in a hammock and you don't know, and one of the things that's kind of gotten in the way of you trying is not understanding it, check this video out. It will outline kind of how to hang a hammock and kind of the basics of what you need to understand to get into it and have a, a good, comfortable sleep on your first night. If you're still watching, my name's Nathan. This is Backpacker-ish. Like, comment, subscribe, or don't, whatever.